Hey, I'm going to add the buffer uh, shape to a map when I click on the map. And right now, this is filtering to just the features that are near the point that I clicked. Um, it might be nice to see the shape that the map is using to filter, uh, so the circle around that point that we clicked to better understand it. Um, and it's possible to do that in Cardo, and let's do that now. So in my code right now, I just have one layer. It's that layer that we're filtering from. It's uh, motor vehicle collisions in New York City. And I'm going to add a new layer, and um, I'll just call it buffer layer. And I need to create a source and a style. So I'm just going to sketch this out, buffer source, buffer style, buffer layer. I need all of these things. Uh, the buffer layer is pretty easy. We're just going to um, combine the buffer source and the buffer style. So I'll just insert those here. And then the style, it's going to be a polygon because it's a buffer. Um, so I'm going to start from this, but since this is styling markers, I want to replace this with um, a polygon fill. And I'll just start with gray for now, just so it's um, possible to see it. Maybe make it a little bit transparent. Okay, and I'm going to, <clears throat> those parts are relatively straightforward. Oops, I forgot the equal sign there. I need to add a source. So usually the source is select all of the, <clears throat> all of the features from a data set in Cardo. Unfortunately, um, well, it's different because we just, it's not coming from a data source. We're just going to draw a polygon in Cardo. And it's possible to do this. Um, I'm going to copy some of my SQL from later where I am uh, filtering the motor vehicle collisions. Remember, um, when you're filtering within an area, we say ST within, and we say where the smaller feature is within the larger feature, the buffer. So I actually want to draw this buffer. And I'm going to start with this example one that I have here, which is centered around a particular uh, latitude and longitude, just to make sure that it's working. So it's going to be a new cardo.source.sql. And I'll plop that in there. So this is not a valid SQL statement right now. Uh, I need to say select. And I want to select this buffer as the geom web mercator. And that tells Cardo this is a geometry that you can draw. It needs to have this name, the Geom Web Mercator. And um, as the name implies, it should be in the projection Web Mercator. So I need to transform this whole shape to Web Mercator, which is the EPSG code is 3857. And I think that might work. So I'm selecting the buffer around a given latitude and longitude. Um, and that buffer right now is 10,000 feet. And I'm going to fill it with gray, half transparent, 
and oh, I need to, if we look back here, we don't see that buffer yet. Uh, I didn't add it to the client, so I need to do that here. I'll put it under my other layer so I can see both at the same time. So I'm using add layers because I have multiple layers. And now when I go back, unfortunately, nothing's showing up. And if you're in developer tools, I'm in Firefox right now, but it should be pretty similar. If you look under the network tab, um, you should see a request like this one. <clears throat> and buried in here, there's an error from Cardo. And it says, column cardodb underscore id does not exist. And the reason it's complaining there is it needs every feature to have a cardodb id. But we don't have one here. So I'm just going to make one up. I'll say cardodb id is 1. So I need to give it the name cardodb id. So now I'm selecting 1 as cardodb id, this big buffer as the GM Web Mercator. Let's see if that's working. Yeah, it works. Cool. So that's just in one place, right? Um, so we probably want to make it show up over there, right? So we need to do something when the map is clicked. And we need to basically do this again. We need to set the query on the buffer source, but down here. And I'll just do it here at the end of my map click handler. And I'm going to say buffer source dot set query. Because that's how you change the SQL on a source. And right now, it would always be at the same latitude and longitude, because it's hard-coded here. And <clears throat> I need to insert the latitude and longitude from the event. And that's in e.latlong. Um, and I'm just going to copy this, because I don't feel like putting it in there again. So I'm replacing these numbers with the numbers from the event. <clears throat> Let's see how that works. Yeah, great. So now we have a little bit of context when we see features show up, or when we see features do not show up. Like if we click out here, it makes a little bit more sense why, uh, perhaps. So we can see more concretely um, what exactly the buffer is. And that's taking a little bit to update. OK. So last issue, we have the fact that it always starts there. <clears throat> um, and unfortunately, we kind of have to have it start somewhere because um, Car is not going to like it if we are adding a source with no SQL. What I might do, <clears throat> it's kind of cheesy, but if I buffer it by zero feet, it's basically going to disappear. Um, depending on your situation, that might be fine. Um, I think it's okay for for this kind of thing. So, so now you see that. We have all the features, and we don't have a buffer that we can see yet. And now if I click somewhere, we should see the buffer, all the features. And that's how you would usually uh, add another geometry to your cardamom.